What is up, beautiful people of the internet? I am Wesley, and today we are answering a massively... Okay, we're not answering. We're reacting to somebody answering a massively hot topic. What if we nuke the moon? What if we nuke the freaking moon? Not gonna lie, I don't know why I've always kind of had this fantasy or this vision in my mind of just like shooting tons of missiles at the moon and trying to knock it out of the sky. I don't know if this is somehow like a manifestation of a super villain in my past family line that's like a recessive gene that's just like, let's shoot, let's shoot the moon. Let's break the moon. I don't know. Maybe I just watched Star Wars too many times and the Death Star is kind of shaped like the moon. Maybe it is the moon. I don't know, but let's find out what would actually happen. What would happen if we were to detonate a very, very powerful nuclear weapon on Blow the, moon? Up the moon? Would the explosion knock its orbit towards Earth, causing tidal waves and misery? Could the moon be destroyed, yes! showering the Earth I in a rain so. of meteoric death? Like, Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. I unironically just kind of want to blow up the whole ass moon. I want to crack that thing like an egg and just... What if it's hollow? What if there's like... What if the moon is just a giant egg and I blow it up and I bring the Ender Dragon into this reality? Maybe that's where Aurora Boros is. I don't know. Chris <laughs> Giat! During the Cold War, the Moon was a major target for space exploration and, you know, military bases. So, the US Air Force commissioned a serious study into the effects of a nuclear detonation on the surface of the Moon. But just quoting stuff is boring, so let's conduct a very important scientific experiment with an imaginary 100 megaton thermonuclear warhead. Okay, we're gonna pause real quick, because we just glossed over something, and I'm just like catching up right now. Did, did Kurt Sack just say that there is an actual... The moon became the target for military bases in the Cold War? Did I, like, miss that section of the history books? When he says it was a target, was it that the, the U.S. and Russia wanted to establish military bases on the moon? Or is, are, are we getting, like, ground-breaking um, divulgence of information? Like, oh, there were military bases on the moon. Because... I don't remember hearing about that. Like, I want to know if there's military bases on the moon because I'm going to blow it up. So I want to know if there's people living there currently. Did you guys catch that or am I just about crazy? twice as powerful as the most powerful bomb ever detonated. Okay. We'll also place a number of curious astronauts around the moon as observers. Sounds like a really bad Let's idea. push the button and slow down time. Also great technology. For the technology. first few milliseconds, nothing much happens outside our weapon. Meanwhile, inside, high explosives send a shockwave to a radioactive metal core, compressing it so much that it reaches criticality and starts a nuclear fission chain reaction. The 100 million degree plasma created in this first stage sets off the second stage with atomic nuclei fusing like they do in the core of a star. Fun fact, this is also actually an x-ray. The way they got this footage is they x-rayed my stomach after a particularly aggressive Taco Bell session. Very briefly, our weapon this is my contains ball. one of the hottest places in the universe. And only now, barely 10 milliseconds later, does the rest of the universe find out that anything has happened as suddenly the bomb dissolves and a flaming star yep, of nuclear goes. death is born. I know that feel. So far, so good. This is the view from but my everything toilet. Everything that happens now is very different from what we're used to on Earth because of one major difference there's no atmosphere. As the fireball shines, it releases a flash of X-rays and thermal photons, a wave of silent heat which rushes outwards in all directions. On Earth, this heat would char and burn everything within a 50-kilometer radius at least. But on the Moon, without an atmosphere and oxygen-rich air, there's no burning at all. Also, there what? are no things to burn. The crunchy topsoil of the moon is made from silicate rock and metals chewed to dust by eons of meteorite impacts mixed with tiny traces of water. When heated by the explosion, X-rays from the fireball vaporize a thin cloud of rock from the lunar surface, while the unlucky dust that's inside the fireball melts into glass. Any astronauts watching the show within about 50 kilometers can expect to be fried. And now we begin to see one of the biggest dip- That's kind of- yo! That's kind of, this is kind of messed up. 
That's like slightly sadistic. That astronaut didn't have to be there. You put them there. You put this poor animated bird in the line of death knowingly. It was for an experiment. No, it wasn't. This was not a... You killed the... You're torture... What? Differences between explosions in space and on Earth. On Earth, the atmosphere fights back against the plasma bubble. Its expansion is violently stopped within moments by the pressure of the atmosphere. But this is not good news. As the fireball rams the atmosphere, it produces the most destructive part of a nuclear explosion on Earth, the shock wave. Compressed air around the explosion rushes out faster part than the of speed the of sound, shattering buildings and roaring so loud it ruptures organs. But on the moon, there is no shock wave. No atmosphere means nothing to impede the expanding explosion in space. On the moon, the fireball just grows in eerie silence as there's no atmosphere to stop it or to give it a voice. That looks like Goku powering up in like half of all Dragon Ball Z episodes. This would be an amazing thing to watch from a safe distance. Unfortunately, there's hardly any safe viewing distance for a nuclear explosion on the moon. Without an atmosphere weakening the deadly ionizing radiation that can scramble DNA, anyone close enough to get a good look will be exposed to fatal <laughs> amounts of radiation. Bro, you must hate but of birds. Course, you put it there! Right. While all of this happens, the explosion hammers against the moon, transferring about a tenth of the explosion energy into seismic waves, powering an intense moonquake. The moon, moon is much quake. smaller than the moon Earth, quake. and our astronauts will feel an inescapable violent shaking no matter where they're standing. Comparable to an earthquake of seven on the Richter scale, this shaking could seriously- You put them in the middle of a crater for no reason. Now you're just crushing birds for fun, you sadistic bastards. Cars, come on, come on. Just damage or even level infrastructure we might have built anywhere on the moon. They're having a party? Those who hit on the far oh, they... side of the moon would have no idea quake. it was an explosion. The quaking would feel like an asteroid the size of the Great Pyramid had struck. And it's not over yet. Where our bomb explodes, the ground splatters like water when a rock strikes a pond. As the explosion pushes against the surface, it may excavate as much as 100 million cubic meters of dust and rock, forming a crater a kilometer across while bedrock is pulverized to rubble. Debris is shot into the sky in every direction. Again, without an atmosphere, there's no drag to slow any of it down. Much of the debris scattered never returns to the moon, flying off faster than escape velocity. A flurry of micrometeorites have been cast off to explore the solar system, many of which will rain down on the Earth, though few will be larger than pebbles. Any satellite, astronaut or space station in the way, though, will have a really bad time. Micrometeorites are launched at many speeds and angles, allowing them to spread all over the surface of the moon. Like bullets, they'll punch through our curious astronauts, oh, no. no matter where they stand. No! Duck! Finally, our explosion... I'm an idiot. It wasn't a duck. It was a canary! ...comes to an end. On Earth, the fireball rises like a hot air balloon birds, forming bro. a sort of stalk. As it reaches up, cooler air is drawn in around it, rounding the top into a mushroom cloud. But on the moon, well, you know by now, no atmosphere, no mushroom. The larger the plasma gets, the cooler it becomes, and the less energy it has to make interesting or terrifying things happen. Within seconds of pulling the trigger, the bubble reddens and fades from view. It would be visible from the Earth, like a star flickering to life, only to fade out right away. A spark, and then nothing. How are these birds going to die? Cloud of oh, they made debris it? reaches far above the surface of the moon, it's illuminated by the sun for a few minutes, giving it an eerie beauty for anyone left to observe the spectacle. What about the moon's orbit? It's basically unchanged. Trying to move the moon with a nuke is like trying to move a truck by blowing on it. Nuclear explosions may be big, but space is bigger. Our mighty explosion just leaves another crater one among millions. Still, anyone on the moon will continue to not enjoy themselves. The material that ends up raining back to the moon is radioactive, and without any natural processes to wash it away or bury it, the surface of the moon will remain contaminated. Although fortunately, the worst of the radiation will have decayed to a level comparable to natural levels from cosmic rays in about a year. Oh, in, in a year? That's okay. That's not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be after just how hellacious this has been for every bird that we've seen just about. I thought that was going to be so much worse. Also, are we glossing over the fact the craters, they say that they're from asteroids. What if they're just from a bunch of nukes?
ancient nukes from space. Alien nukes! Conclusion, we can say with confidence that while the moon itself does not care about being nuked, and will barely notice, using the moon as a nuclear test ground kind of ruins it for everyone trying to spend some time there, or to build something useful. So maybe we should just not do that. Ah, uh, but I want to, though. This was our last video of the year 12,020, and uh, oh dear, what an interesting and weird year it's been in all the worst ways. But it's finally over. We want to end it by saying thank you. We get to do this channel and work on many exciting things because of you burbs. Killed so this many year, burbs our German video, channel man. reached a million subscribers. We launched our Spanish one and released our first app. If everything goes well, we can finally start our largest new project to date next year, but we know better than to promise too much. And get something and how incredibly far away it is. Also, there's a love and coaching and care. That's just crazy. I, I guess I'll have to come up with some other this type of weaponry if I am going to become Wesley the Moonbreaker and have my own Magic the Gathering card. Uh, Moonbreaker, I don't know if that would be white or black in mana. I'm not really sure. But that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you would destroy the moon because I want ideas and I'm going to recruit a team. I'm hiring. It'll be paid. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Unpaid internship position. So please let me know. Give me your resumes down below. That being said, subscribe for more reactions. I will see you guys next time. Bye.